Gravel bikes are dead. What's next? I buy the bike. And some of you are going to absolutely hate it. I already know what comments people are going to leave, but you know what? It. This is the bike I kind of want to ride right now. I had planned to do a big, long, elaborate build video, but the bike came in late. Then I had to get the headset installed by a local bike shop because I don't have a bearing press. All the while, we're just counting the seconds until the first forest fire in our region. So needless to say, I just kind of slapped it together the second I got back from the bike shop and built it up in about two hours. No time to film whatsoever, but screw it. Here it is. So here it is before you, a very, very pink Tanglefoot hardtack. Before I get into why I built it, what its purpose is, how it's different from say a 90s mountain bike, which I would be surprised if someone has not typed that already. Let's look at the build. This one interestingly is built around 700C. I do have a 650B wheel set in the wings waiting for it. But, but for the first couple of weeks, I think I'm gonna ride it in this configuration. I was really impressed with the Thunderbird tires. They're, tw they're 29 by 2.1, surprisingly light, surprisingly fast rolling, but really good grip. These wheels are the new, new Ritchie Zeta WCS GX wheel set, a star ratchet driver. They're set up uh, tubeless right out of the box, 25 mil internal rim width so this is this might be the largest tire you can go uh, on this wheel set probably the nicest thing about this wheel set is you know full price msrp is 599 and i know that is not cheap by any means it's it's not as good a deal as that hundred dollar wheel set at your local bike co-op but in terms of a brand new modern wheel set you know 600 bones yes it's a lot but in the spectrum of what wheels cost these days pretty dang good. Full disclosure, Richie did send that to the channel uh, for a review, so that is why I am riding them on this particular build. Moving on to the headset, I decided to go with some purple uh, wolf tooth uh, blingy components just to add some spice and, you know, kind of bring out the magenta a little bit more. The stem is by Velo Orange. The handlebars are these uh, slightly swept back riser bars. They rise up about 70 mil. And they're, they're a crust bar made by Nitto, I believe. What's unique about them is they have this really long flat section here uh, designed specifically for bags in mine. These feel very similar to the Soma Dream Bars, which I really, really like, but they address that one thing if you carry things on your bike that sort of annoyed me is that this section wasn't quite wide enough, but this is perfect if you run like a Caradise style bag in the front. Moving on to the controls, I've got two micro shift Thumb shifters set up friction, uh, although this will index 11 speed. Uh, brake levers, not Paul's, but they are IRD. I had this on my 90s mountain bike, harvested it uh, for this build. And to top it all off, I had to put uh, some ESI grips. Um, these were from a very, very limited run of uh, party pace grips. Although if there is enough interest, I think we'll do a larger production run. So if you're into these grips, um, I think we might get them in this blue and a purple. Let me know in the comments below. Moving on to the cranks, this is where things get a little creative. Uh, it is a two bike crank, uh, a Dior 36 by 26. I think I, I bought it from a local bike shop for like a hundred bucks or 80 bucks or something. You will notice that the front railer is missing at the moment. Uh, I do plan to put on one of these bad boys. This is a micro shift uh, front derailleur. Not very sexy, a little bit on the heavy side but they are the perfect shape for these smaller sub sub compact crank sets. I'm waiting for a cable stop that hasn't arrived yet. Uh, but for the time being, I have been actually practicing shifting the front chain rings with my feet. I can pedal and drop it into the smaller chain ring fairly consistently. And now I'm practicing pushing the chain over to the bigger chain ring. I've been able to do it maybe a dozen times, but don't have it down quite yet. But Look for a future how to shift with your feet video. That's right, this amazing content. None of those BS videos like, can you use a gravel bike as a road bike? Of course you can. Why make a video about it? Moving on to the seat posts. I've been playing with two seat posts. Currently this is a dropper seat post that you actuate with this lever under the saddle here. 
But then that B-roll footage, it's got a carbon fiber seat post by Reval, Roval. I'd been using that seat post on my Bombora, but wasn't getting any flex out of it because I had such little seat posts showing. But on this bike with the sloping top tube, a ton of seat posts and a lot of flex, it's actually doing things. In the rear is an 11 to 40 cassette in 11 speeds and a micro shift derailleur. The brakes aren't anything baller. They're those uh, river brakes that were on the original test bike. I think they're fairly middle of the road, uh, probably par with like a Spire. However, using those brake calipers uh, with flat bar levers has uh, dramatically improved the brakes. I've noticed this basically across every single uh, cable actuated disc brake I've tried, that some of them can be really meh with drop bars, but put a flat bar lever, um, you know, you just get more leverage and the brake feels a lot better. Okay, so what the heck is this bike? To be honest, I've been a little bit burnt out on the gravel bike, if you will. I feel like I hit peak gravel bike sometime last year, and that's why I've been reviewing like a little bit more stranger, interesting bikes. For me, the interesting, innovative, wild west time of the gravel bike is, is done. It's over. Now that gravel bikes are essentially mainstream, they're just kind of road adjacent bikes at this point. Already we've seen the experimentation go away. You know, they're becoming streamlined. They're, they're losing their mounts or basically becoming road bikes. Gravel bikes are the new road bikes. Road bikes are the new hybrids, whatever. So they, they weren't really doing it for me anymore because they were becoming so similar, so race focused, and I was just kind of forget it. Gravel bikes are dead. What's next? There's been a lot of murmur on the hipster edges of the, the bike universe about the rise of the ATB. So ATB, all-terrain bicycle, basically the essence of the original uh, 80s and 90s mountain bikes, something that's just goofy and fun and really excels on gravel fire roads. So some of you would have probably typed by now, at least many of you would have typed by now, well, that's just a 90s mountain bike there, Russ. Well, you wouldn't be wrong, but you wouldn't be 100% right either. As aside from like the modern standards of disc brakes, through axle, th threadless steer, you know, 27.2 seat posts, no funky seat post diameters. Those are probably the obvious ways it's not like a 90s mountain bike. You know, digging into the geometry a little bit more. And the, the hard tack is fairly slack. I believe the head tube angle is 69 degrees. It borrows from some kind of progressive-ish mountain bike uh, geometry. It's not super slack, but definitely slacker than those, you know, 71 degree, 72 degree head tube angles of those older mountain bikes. Rear, rear chain stay on this beast is also fairly long and it's got a sloping top tube. Unlike most vintage mountain bikes that we're still trying to maintain that level top tube, this gives me more standover clearance and allows me to run a dropper post. Probably the biggest way that this differs and most important way is just it's got higher stack. Those vintage mountain bikes had really low stack and really long reach and the handlebars were on tent poles out in front of you. So, so great if you like riding in this position, but if you want something more relaxed, they're always a pain in the butt to bring the bars up. But with this, since it has more generous stack height, a lot easier to get a level with the saddle position. And so where this fits in the spectrum for me is it's a lot more comfortable bike. It's definitely more upright. There's no, there's no way this is going to be confused with a racing gravel bike. It's also a little bit more capable, I think, than a drop bar gravel bike. The intentionally longer uh, trail in the design just makes it a little bit more comfortable when descending. And, and long wheelbase makes it super smooth. Still today, a lot of gravel bikes are following road racing bikes, tuck chain stays, you know, really sprightly, that, and that's fine. I have a bike like that. This is supposed to be the opposite of those bikes. It's probably more akin to just a fully rigid bike, which, which it is. I don't plan to run suspension on this ever, basically. To my mind, this bike uh, fills that gap similar to a Jones bike. But, but without the weight and the meats of a Jones bike. It's kind of like a, a Jones bike light. For me, this is primarily going to be just a, you know, have fun, chill, relaxed pace, gravel, gravel road explorer with no pretensions for racing whatsoever. Another bike or set of bikes I was taking inspiration from uh, were, were the Rivendells. I love the upright yet still capable feel of something like the Rivendell Suzy Longbolts, but wanted something that would take a dropper post. So this is 27.2 
pretty easy to get a dropper piston there. Can't really do that with any of the ribs unless you use something like the height right. So to me, this would be kind of my modernish, uh, maybe slightly garish interpretation of uh, the rib uh, long bolts or, or Gus Boots Wilson. So, so how's it ride? Does it meet my expectations so far? I took, it, I took it on some single track today, which I didn't film, uh, but we did take this down to the river. Nice cruisy kind of dirt road and the bike was a blast. The, the bigger wheels do roll over the washboard a little bit easier. Not 100% convinced I'm going to stay with 700 uh, on this bike. However, I still feel uncomfortably high like I'm riding a horse. So, so that may change eventually. High, high trail front end makes it really stable on kind of loose terrain. But the wide swept back handlebars, um, they put my hands a little bit in front of the steering access. It's, good, it's a good balance of maneuverability and stability for me. I wanted something that captured the ethos of the 90s mountain bike, the non-racing ATB, a bike that's just a bike for biking sake, not to KOM, not to stand on a pedestal, not to win a trophy, just to go out in the woods and explore. A, wood, a woodsy bike. And I think this bike uh, and this build uh, nails it. If you're part of our Patreon, then you know we're running a contest right now that should have already ended by the time this video goes up. We're giving away the Roadrunner bag that I reviewed a couple weeks ago to, to the person that could guess the complete weight of this bike in 700C. With the carbon fiber seat post that you guys saw in all the lovely B-roll, the bike weighed in at 26.2 pounds, which I think is pretty dang good for this kind of bike. What do you guys think of the ATB? Is it time for it to make a comeback? I kind of hate the term ATB, but it is what it is. What do you guys think of the bike? Is it cool or is it whack? I'm sure you've already let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you like this content, want to take part in more Patreon uh, only contests, you know, consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon or by buying some stickers and patches and maybe even some foam grips in a couple of months or weeks. Who knows? As always, keep the supple side down.